a beautiful Gordon. And let's hope that he does come for some therapy. <laughs> I have a feeling that he might be in the chair a while. I have a feeling so, yeah. 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 Okay. And so now what I'd like to do is to use the chair again. And this time, Gordon, I want you to place in front of you, at a safe distance from you, the representative of sleeping mankind, Mr. Dreamer. Mm. And as you look at Mr. Dreamer there in the chair, sitting quite comfortably, possibly with not much of a care in the world, I want you to express your feelings towards Mr. Dreamer. I want you to let it all out. Now is the time for healing. Now is the time to open those floodgates. Everything that you've been wanting to say here, now is the time to do that. I want you to express it with all the emotion, all of the disappointment, all of the anger that you are feeling. I want you to let Mr. Dreamer feel this now. Go for it. I don't know whether... I don't know whether you're more embarrassing... Probably, yes. You're more embarrassing than the people who actually do this work. And you're more embarrassing because you believe yourself to be a wonderful person. You believe yourself to be a wonderful person, a do-gooder. Um, I do exactly what I'm told to do. You're just like them. You do exactly what you're told to do. I've been told not to look up. I've been told that they are not lines in the sky created by chemicals, but rather they are condensation. I mean, are you off your fucking rocket? Are you off? Do, do you really think that condensation can go from one side of the sky to the other and hang there all day and then drop down under the earth? You can see it dropping, dripping. Is that what condensation is? I don't think so. And yet there you are in your own little world of dupey, Believing that everything is fine. Believing that it's absolutely normal. I mean, and you were born before 1980. Let's say that on, yeah, probably 19, maybe 1990. You were born before that. Can you remember the summer of 76? You remember how clear the skies were for months and months and months and months and months and months? And months? I remember lying in my garden, looking up at the sky, watching the planes go by and they were leaving a little tiny contrail like that. And now they go from one side of the sky. Now they, they, they paint pictures in the sky. Some of them do faces. Now they do little patterns. They do a lot of the, the devil's um, pentagram. Lots of them going on as well. And there you are. Do you know where you're fucking looking? Are you fucking mobile? You're walking along the road looking at your fucking mobile. You should be looking up. Do you understand what they're doing? Do you understand what they're doing to our world? And it's not just that. You, 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 don't look, you, you don't look anywhere. You don't look anywhere. And you, specifically the person that I'm looking at now, allowing your children to have that. And you, supposedly intelligent, supposedly qualified, PhDs, and you're fucking stupid. You are. Like, like it's, and I'm not talking about intelligence, like a academic intelligence. You're just fucking stupid. And you're willing to allow people who have no business to do things to you and your family, to hurt you and your family. And you don't even recognize it. You don't recognize it. It's time, for fuck's sake, wake the fuck up. Look the fuck up. Ask 
yourself some questions. Just ask some simple questions. Stop accepting everything. Stop putting jabs in your arm every fucking five minutes. What the fuck is going on with you? Disaster. You are a walking disaster. Um, dear me, dear me, is there any hope? <laughs> is there life on this planet? This is the question I'm asking. Is there life on this planet? Ah, oh, dear me. Okay, I'm done. Well done. Well done. Okay, you know where you're going now. I'm going to ask you to change places, Gordon, with Mr. Dreamer. You're going to have to place yourself on that chair and you are now going to be Mr. Dreamer. And Mr. Dreamer, I want to talk to you now. Okay. Okay. Now you've heard... What Gordon said. You've heard. Yeah, very what, rude man, I might add. Very rude man. So you've heard the emotion that Gordon spoke to you with. Gordon believes that you are more embarrassing than Bob the pilot. But that you believe that you're a wonderful person, a do-gooder, living in your own little world of duty, <laughs> with everything being fine and absolutely normal, that you don't look anywhere, and that you're allowing your children to be in a situation that might not be best for them. And that you, with your qualifications, your intelligence, your PhD, that you just need to wake up. How do you respond to that? How, how does anybody respond to that? I mean, the, the man's rude. He just uses swear words unnecessarily. Um, quite where he's getting his information from, I don't know, but it's certainly not from the places that I look. Um, it's people like him that cause problems in society. I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm quite offended as it happens. Uh, you know, I, I can rise above that, understanding that there's obviously clearly a mental issue with him. He's not right. I mean, I, you know, what I do, I mean, I, I people often call me the pillar of, of our society and in our village that we live. I, I, all I do is good stuff. I don't even know what he's talking about. I take care of my family. I protected my family. We've been through some three very difficult years. And I've always made sure that my family's safe and we're all still here. We're all still alive. And... I don't really know, and I don't know what he's talking about up in the sky. Of course, the contrails. Of course, they are. The 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 very idea that it would, there would be, what are they if they're not? What are they? There's just a lot. You see, in 1976, there, weren't, there wasn't that much air traffic. Now there's a lot of air traffic. Everybody's traveling. This is why the, uh, the, the virus happened in the first place, because we travel so much. And so... There's just more more traffic in the air. So what do you expect? What do you expect? I mean, this is why we should be thinking about where we travel. We we need to be conscious of our carbon footprint. Because look at the skies. Yes, I agree. You know, that's not very nice to see, is it? That they're filled with, you know, aeroplanes. That means that all of those emissions are going into the into the into the air. So yeah, but that the that might be anything other than condensation. Well, that's just ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I don't, I, I, you know, the, he's, he's obviously 
lost the plot and he's a little bit out of it. But I, I think there's an ever-growing group, a very concerning amount of people that are believing this tripe, this trollop that's that's being bandied around. He's probably on Telegram. I wouldn't be surprised. I've read about it in the mail. So got a really yeah, I mean I'm not going to open a dialogue with with him because what could we talk about we're on two different planets and he's clearly off his trolley however you know each to their own you know each to their own okay Mr Dreamer what dangers do you believe that Gordon is opening up to the world with this viewpoint that he has chaos it's chaotic can you not hear him his mind's chaotic he can barely hold an argument a thread of an argument he's all over the place this is chaotic we can't have chaotic societies this is why we're in so many problems because of this chaos we need order we need discipline we need rules to follow that's how we create a good society a strong society not having everybody with weird ideas where would we be? Would be it would be it would be chaos. Absolutely not. And who needs to manage this discipline, this order? The people. Listen, I you know I believe in freedom. I believe in democracy. I vote every time. I vote because I want to uh, because I know that I can choose. I can choose who leads us. And that's the whole, that's the beauty of the of the society that we're in. We're in a democracy and we need to bring democracy to more countries. We need to force democracy upon them. And the people who are in power, we have elected and they work for us. And that's, that's what democracy is all about. They're the ones, we pay them to fix our problems. And do they fix our problems? They do the best, I think. You know, they're only human. I think we expect so much from them. And they do do the best. Yes, they make mistakes, of course. But, you know, so do we, so do we all. So do we all. But, you know, let's give them a chance. Let's, let's, you know, let's support them. And then they can do a good job. Do we hold them accountable when they make mistakes? I don't know what where you want to lead me with this. Uh, look, everybody makes mistakes. And yes, we all should be accountable for our mistakes. Of course we should. But also, you know, to make an omelette, you've got to break some eggs. And so, you know, we can't just be jumping on every single thing that somebody does. Just, you know, they, they, they're trying the best. This is the problem. It's like we're in this we're in this world where everybody's attacking everybody else because they said something or whatever. Come on, let's just let our rulers, let our leaders lead. Do you trust the leaders? Implicitly. Because we're in a democracy. Because I voted for that person. All right, maybe I, my, the people I vote for didn't get in, but that means the majority of people voted for that person and therefore we should trust them. They wouldn't be in if we didn't want them to be there. Do you believe that there's such a thing as corruption within the leadership? Of course, but compared to other countries, this the corruption, for example, in the UK is so small. I mean, it happens. There are pockets of it. There always will be. There are always, there are always bad people. But generally, I mean, we, we just don't tolerate it in the British government. We never have. Do you believe that the British government works for the people? Absolutely. That's what democracy is all about. Democracy has never been uh, more important than what it is these days. This is what we need. And we need to focus on democracy instead of all of this, this chaos and, 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 and anti-disestablishment. No, it's no good. It should be stamped on. Do you believe that democracy works all the time? Of course. Look, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to be black and white. Democracy, it, it's better than, let's say that. It's better than communism. Look, that didn't work, did it? It's better than a dictatorship. Look, that didn't work, did it? 
I think it's a fair and equitable system. It has its flaws. Of course it does. But it works. It's worked for a long time. And do you believe that through that democracy that we are being shown the right way to do things, that we're being shown the right way to go about, for example, health? I don't think anybody can deny the fantastic job that the National Health Service did during this this uh, pandemic. I don't think anybody can deny. I mean, you know, I was there every night applauding them. And thank God for the, the National Health Service. And so, yes, I believe, I be, you know, I believe that they have our best interests at heart and they did the best that they could in a very difficult situation. Goodness. And the key workers. Everybody. Everybody did a fantastic job. I, I think I, I take my hat off to them. I'm eternally grateful. And I donate uh, each month, you know, to help this situation just because we, we, we've got to help. We've got to help. This is it. We've got to help. Okay, Mr. Dreamer, you mentioned earlier that you are considered a pillar of society. Absolutely. All you do is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that? I help uh, in the community. Um, I, I give to, to various charities every, every month. Um, my door is always open to anybody who needs help. Um, you know, I work in the local church and, and we have a beautiful community there. Uh, I help, I help where I can, you know, that's what life's all about, isn't it? When was the last time that someone made use of your door always being open? Uh, I suppose the other day there was somebody... You know, uh, one of the neighbours needed some help, and I was there, and I went and helped. You know, but that's 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 what we're here for—to help one another. If everybody did that, this world would be a better place, would it not? And how was that? Um, everybody helping one another. How was that um, brought about during the COVID times that we've just been through? Well, exactly. I mean, it was a it was the classic example of everybody cooperating together, everyone maintaining the distance, everybody wearing a mask except those like him, uh, the crazies that didn't want to, and probably just extended the pandemic more because of their silly behaviour. Everybody stepping forward and getting the the the, the jab. Um, you know, it was just it was so beautiful to watch everybody rallying together. It brought us all together. I think. Did you make sure that you got yourself tested often? Uh, once a week. Uh, we did it, all of the family. We did it, all uh, all of the family, every week, because we did not want to put anybody in jeopardy. We never did, you know, and and uh, you, I'm very proud of how we how we did it. I mean, we, you know, we, we followed every guideline. We had the app. We did everything. Um, yeah. And you're very proud of yourself for doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. If everybody did that, perhaps it wouldn't have dragged on for the time it did. And how frightened were you during this time, this last three years? Uh, we were very concerned. I was very, I was concerned for the world. I was concerned for my family. It was a scary, it was a scary time. We, nobody knew, not even the government knew what was, what was going to happen. This, we've never had this before. It was very scary, I have to admit. Yeah. But I firmly believed that what we needed to do was follow the guidance, follow the science. And look, we got through it. What do you do for a living? I'm a solicitor. How long did you study at university for? Oof. Long. I had to do um I had to do my degree and then I had to do a, a master's. Um so yeah, I was studying for probably ten years to uh, to get to where I was. And how do you feel about your qualifications and how hard you worked? I'm 
proud of them. I mean, who wouldn't be? I'm proud of them. I, it was hard work, but it was worth it. And now I'm able to provide for my family in a beautiful way. And and uh, that's good. And that's that's what being successful is all about, is it not? And you believe you are successful? Well, you know, without sounding uh, big-headed, then I believe I've got a successful life. I've got a beautiful family and, you know, we're very happy together and we, you know, we have, we don't want for anything. I think that's pretty much successful, don't you? Okay. All right. Thank you for your views on that. Thank you. Welcome. And now I'm going to ask you to allow Gordon to come back into the chair and I'd like to talk to Gordon about what you've been saying. So Gordon, if you'd like to come back into the chair and you've heard <laughs> pillar of society <laughs> and to say about the world, about you, about <laughs> his views about the last three years, what do you think of that? Um, I suppose, you know, that man is the antipathy of, of who, who I believe myself to be the antipathy. So everything that he says, um, it's kind of like, I would have to do the opposite. However, what can I, what can I expect? I, I truly believe he's a good person. I truly believe it you're a good person i know you're a good person but good people can still be misdirected good people can still do bad things and i don't hold the views that you hold nor will i ever and i don't think i've ever held your views in the whole of my life maybe i've been a rebel all of my life i don't know but I've never ever been able to to get into the place that you're in. It's for me, it's the deepest, deepest, deepest psychosis and hypnosis that possibly could exist. But do you know I don't hold it against you? I don't it, what I don't I can't what having listened to you and it was just horrific. <laughs> It was horrific to listen to your arguments and and the way that you kind of see life. It was it was it was it's like living in a dystopian nightmare for me to listen to that. But I can't expect any other from you. I can't expect you to be any other because that's who you are. And far be it from me to tell you that you need to change. Not my job. Not my job. And so I'm sorry that I, I was angry with you. I'm sorry that I was telling you what you had to do. I withdraw that. You do exactly what you want to do. You do and be exactly what you want to do and be. But by the way, I'm going to be getting on with my life as well, if that's okay. I'm going to do and be exactly what I want to do and be. And yes, I am on Telegram. I don't know why everyone's fucking mentioned Telegram. You be who you are, and please, God, I pray, I pray, I pray that the awakening comes for you sooner than later. I truly pray for you all. I really do. But we're, we're squits. We're even. Okay? Do you feel ready to forgive Mr. Dreamer? For sure, yeah, Absolutely. I've already done, I've already done it, but I'll do it again. Yeah. Tell him, put it into words. Tell him. I forgive you. I forgive everything that you do. I forgive everything that you think. I forgive you because everything that you do and think at some point in my life, I've done and thought. And so, who am I to point the finger at you? You do your stuff. Do your stuff, and just be. And I know you're a good person. I know you help people, and I know you you do good things. And the intention is always good. So I've completely forgiven you. Okay. Just leave me the fuck alone. All right. <laughs> good. Well done. That was beautiful. <laughs> and even put the swear word in that you disagreed with. <laughs> okay. So, Gordon, we're going to move that chair away now. 
it's just you here in the room now. And I want to take this time mm. to talk to you. I want to say some words to you now. And I am very proud of you for your forgiveness. The emotion that you expressed was very strong. And you have found it in your heart to forgive. And you have found it in your heart to forgive because you know that that is how you set yourself free. And there are many different types of people in this world. There are many different viewpoints. There are many souls here on their different soul journeys. And each journey is not our own. It is theirs. And they are at different places. Everyone is at a different place. And all we can do is look at our own soul journey. Look at where we are along our timeline, where we've been, what we've learned, where we're going, but most importantly, where we are right now. Remembering that the present moment holds all of the power. What has been has been. What is yet to come has nothing to do with us for now. It's for another moment. The moment we have is now. What we give our energy to is what grows. What we give our energy to with our focus and with our attention is what grows. So if we are giving energy to something that is not serving us, all that it's happening is it's growing within us because we have that power. We are that powerful to create. And the truth of it is that none of us truly know everything about those fluffy white lines. Mm. We've heard, we've listened to science, we've heard reports about what it could be doing, but we actually truthfully do not know. And one thing to note is that if it creates discomfort, if it creates negativity within us, if it creates those negative emotions, is that really where we want to be? Or is that part of the plan? There are those that do not see them. Are they negatively affected by them? or not, we don't know. But are they giving more power to it with their attention? No. But those of us who can see, who look up, who value nature, who are doing our very best to protect our families, to protect humanity, we look, we are looking, and yet we are giving our attention to it. And it's creating negativity. And as high as our vibrations can be, for everything else, if we are creating that negativity, it's drawing us back down. It's lowering our vibrations. Our life is about the peaks and the troughs. What we do not want is that midpoint straight line. 
and remember that as we go into those peaks and then we sense that negativity, but we're always looking up, looking. That negativity brings us back down closer to that straight line, that midpoint of unfeeling, that midpoint of the nothingness. For the midpoint is the nothing. The peaks and the troughs are what we live for here in the 3D. And so by looking, by giving our attention, we are creating this negativity within us. And we need to remember that we are creative. We are that powerful that we create what we give our energy to. And so by forgiving today, by setting yourself free, by hearing those other viewpoints, putting yourself into a different perspective, forgiving, allowing that to go, you have no control over what anyone else does. You have no control over what anyone else thinks. You said yourself you cannot even control and 100% protect those you love. All you can do is your very best and show them the best way and be a shining example to them. Be that example of how to take care, how to keep yourself both physically and mentally and emotionally well, be that example to those that you love. But that comes down to your positive thinking in the now. And I know that you can do that. And I know that you can look and you can see what's going on around and you can understand what's going on around and yet you can stop any negativity from coming into your emotion. That you can see it and then you can let it go. Set it free for we do truly not know the full extent of what this is all about. Remember, we need the darkness to illuminate the light. We need the troughs so that when we have the peaks, we fully appreciate them. We grow in the peaks and we learn in the troughs. But the very thing we don't want is just that mid-nothingness. And I know that you are here to do beautiful things. You are a shining light in this world. You are a beautiful example to people of how to question, of how to love, of how to learn and how to grow. Do not let that shining light be dimmed. Allow it to shine so brightly. Allow yourself to be free from these emotions that have been holding you prisoner. Allow yourself to see that beautiful blue sky again. Allow yourself to be at nature, out in nature, and feel the peace once more. You deserve that peace. You do. And with that example, that example of keeping yourself well, physically, mentally, emotionally, you will be that shining light, that example to all of those around you, including those that you love most deeply. 
and they will learn from you and they will learn how to protect themselves. And that is the most powerful thing you can do for them, to show them that so that they learn. Our job as a parent is to teach our children how to fly and how to fly freely and how to live their lives the best way that they can. We set them up, we create the environment for them and then we have to let them go and we have to trust them that we've given them as much information and as much help as we can and then see them soar. And that's what they're going to do because you have set them such a beautiful example. And so now... I want you to open up a space in the top of your head and allow the beautiful white healing light to come down into the top of your head and allow it to flow all through your body, allowing it to travel around to places where there might be a glitch or a knot or something that just needs kneading out or flattening out or relaxing out. Just allow it to go all around your body, this healing, beautiful white light energy. Allow it to travel all around and do its beautiful work to your heart. Allow it to hold that space there and to glow there beautifully, knowing that this will light you up from inside and that light will spill out of you all around to those around close to you and those that you meet, whether it be online, through your teachings that you're doing, your language teaching that you're doing and know that you are spreading this light in the world and that it's beautiful and that you are greatly appreciated. And then closing that space in your head and keeping that light within you, filling you up, powering you on. And in a moment, I'm going to count you back from five through to one. And you are going to come back feeling positive, strengthened, invigorated. Five, feel that energy starting to return to your body. Four, feeling the tingling as it works its way through your fingers and your toes. Three, feeling it working its way up your body. Two, if you need to, a big stretch out. Nine. And one, when you're ready, opening your eyes, coming back into the here and now. Mm. And tell me how you feel. Mm. That was nice. That was nice. I feel very relieved. Ooh. Yeah. That was hilarious. That was hilarious <laughs> talking to those people. They're, they're, they're mingers, aren't they? Go. Oh, the dreamer was just the best. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and and some of your words, like literally, you said the same words so many times. I was going times two, times three, times four, times five. <laughs> big circles around. Oh, we said it again. <laughs> that was great. That was. Oh uh, yeah, it was really good. It was really good. They were they were brilliant, actually. <laughs> the, the, and thank you very much. You did a fab, absolutely fab job. Lovely. And I, I because I, I do this mostly with other people, I forget the power of putting yourself in somebody else's place. I, I was noticing, I mean, with, you know, with Mr. Dreamer, as I was talking, I was just thinking, you poor bastard. You yeah. poor bastard. I wouldn't want to be you in a million years. I'm really, I feel really sorry for you, you know, and it, and it kind of it changes, shifts everything. The same with the, 
with the pilot, it was like so focused. I was thinking, oh man, there's nothing, nothing to do here. There's nothing to do. You know? No, because when that awakening happens for them, it is going to be so traumatic. Dear me. Dear I man. mean, if we thought we had it bad, <laughs> us who have questioned and rebelled our whole lives, those who have just followed the system and been rewarded by it, that's the difference, Gordon. We've never been rewarded by it. We've always been criticised and so we've had to power ourselves up. They've been rewarded when that reward system finishes, when those people that that were everything they idolised suddenly crumble and turn to dust. How are they going to survive? Bless them. Well, they, they'll crumble and turn to dust for a while and I suppose they'll have to be resuscitated be the death it's the death of the old and the birth of the new i suppose poor things but they, they i mean both of them were so rigid i was i was surprised i didn't expect that and they were just so rigid like do not move me from this place that was the yeah. sense do not yeah. move me from this place it's too safe here it's rigid. I mean, uh, you know, the the comic, and I don't know, it was you, and he's probably on Telegram, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there were a couple of times I laughed, and I was like, I should have laughed a bit quieter. <laughs> I could never. <laughs> yeah, that was good. But the, uh, yeah, it, it was hilarious. And, and actually, what I found really interesting, because I thought you were going to say that the pilot was like single, no family, but actually it was really interesting that he had a family and that he did think he was doing it for his children. That, to me, I was like, oh, yeah. How do you argue with that if someone believes they're doing the right thing for their children? That, that's what I was getting, good because obviously you get like this psych schizophrenic type thing going on where I'm – so so adamant he's so adamant about he's doing it for the good if we don't do this it's you know there isn't going to be any future and i was thinking exactly i can't argue with that i'm not uh, you know there's nothing right. how can you argue with that there's nothing and i know you were you know you were kind of pushing the boundaries to see how far and they would go as far as you would push them yeah you know there's no there's no breaking point of oh you might have something there no no it's like no. however far you want to push me i'll give yeah. you the congruent answer very congruent. Very oh, congruent. yeah, definitely. But it's also the lack of responsibility, isn't it, for both? Mm -hmm. The giving the responsibility to somebody else, and then you're you're free. Yeah. The trouble is when you have, start thinking about things, you then take that responsibility on, and that's a that's a big thing. If so, if you just give responsibility to someone else, and then that's it. That, that was, was not that. my fault. They told me to do it, and I just believe them because I always have. <laughs> and that was that chaos thing. Both of them suggested that yeah. if we didn't do it, there would be it would be chaotic. And and I understood exactly what they were saying. You know, it's like, no, no, just do what you're told, and then everything's going to be fine. You know, both of them, for God's sake. Blind faith. It's crazy. but actually, it was really useful to me as well because I could I could see it. You know, as much, and I could see it in so many people I knew. I was like, oh my God, that's my family. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it was interesting because the Mr. Dream had turned into my uncle and, yeah. and then became quite personal for a bit. And then and then afterwards, not. But it was, you know, I think we've all related to people who, who say these words, these kind of like this mm -hmm. hypnotic diatribe that they spout off. And they're very comfortable with it. Thank goodness for us not fitting into the norm, eh? Oh, Thank well. goodness for us having more struggles and, and being the black sheep and... Yeah, into the back seat. <laughs> Absolutely, but you know, maybe, maybe, had we not, had we been like them, maybe we would be happy in that as well. You know, I was yeah. like, you know, I was giving them a hard time saying, you, you know, you're rotten inside. I bet you can't sleep at night. You know, how do you sleep? Like a baby. And I mean, <laughs> but really, really, I had to get that in there. I had to get that in there. I know. I really, so, but it was like, like a smugness of like, I'm perfect. You know. And yeah. I, that's you know that's where they are and, and the only time that they awaken is when that that comfort is taken off them and that, that's yeah. that's good you know that's what's going to happen but hey well you know good for them good for them I, I feel a lot better that they're you know they're doing what they're doing because they believe, truly believe it and that's i always knew that but it's one thing to know it is another thing to feel it 
yeah, it's the feeling it, isn't it? The being there and the feeling it. And then you think, okay, that's where they're coming from. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, that was great. I loved that. That was, there was a lot of emotional release, you know, and there were lots of tears as well. There was anger, but there was tears behind it as well, which, which was lovely. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. No, you're very welcome. I really enjoyed doing that too. Yeah. It Super. Was really good. And uh, you are more than welcome. If you, if there's anything that you'd like to work on, give me a shout and we can, we can do an exchange. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. I might have to think about it. I yeah. don't, I don't want to do health at the moment i'm just done with it <laughs> hey, you know, whatever anything it just you know think about it and if something comes up and you think hey and it doesn't have to be on the negative side it can be on the positive side you know yeah definitely no i'm up for that i'm up yeah. for that yeah right. great thank you very much okay well there you are there are two hours wow that was a that was a session wasn't it yeah, it was good. two it was lots great. to do two lots to do that was very nice no but chair therapy i love it i've only done it once twice before but i love it it's so powerful and you did it really nicely really nice you, you're a brilliant facilitator you've got a very natural way and it, and it, it makes sense the way that you were doing it. and i like the extra bits you put in your own personality as well which is lovely <laughs> well done well done oh, thank you no it's great and you have to let me know how you get on next time you're out and about i will I, i'll give you i'll give you a report in a few days about how i feel about all this because you know there's a lot going there was a lot going on there so let's see how, how i feel yeah because what came to me was just that if actually they really didn't want us to know would it be that obvious in the sky and it did just remind me of a little kid writing their name on the wall and then saying it wasn't me <laughs> absolutely i mean for yeah for some yeah 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 there's a there's a there's more to it than meets the eye, liberally. Definitely. And they could do it at night, and yet they do it in the blue skies. They could do it when it's cloudy, and yet they do it when it's blue skies. You know, what's sure, that yeah. all about? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Oh, I'd love to I'd love to get into the minds of whoever it is that, that works it all out. But anyway, it wasn't in his mind. He, he was just putting chalk dust into the sky. Definitely, and getting paid a nice, pretty penny for doing it. Absolutely. Okay, Vicky, I shall leave you. You enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate no, it. You're welcome, and thank you for letting me do that, because I, I, I really found it useful, and I'm, I'm just loving getting back into the hypnosis. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm.